Welcome to New Hope Bible Church of Irisburg, Vermont. We're so glad that you're fellowshipping and hanging out together and talking. It makes it look better that I'm 10 minutes late. You know, if, it, if everybody had been sitting down, you know, we'd have started on time. It has nothing to do with me. <laughs> yeah, right. Twist everything around, right? All right, we have a few announcements. Is that loud enough or too loud? Sounds loud. All right, the corn maze is open. Thank you. Started yesterday, so if that's something you're interested in or somebody you know is, um, it's actually a great opportunity to get somebody on the grounds that kind of break the ice a little bit that might actually send a kid to camp later on or even come to church. So um, remember that corn maze isn't just a corn maze in our minds. It's a way to get people here and, and uh, seeing what we're all about. Um, one thing, one reason why I'm doing it announcements this morning is because of youth groups that are coming up. Anybody here ever been in youth group before in the past years, adults or kids? Okay, let's do that again because I know that you were and you didn't raise your hand. Anybody here been in youth groups before? All right. Well, they'll be starting pretty soon. Um, teen group will be, should be right in your bulletin, you can look at it, but teen group will be starting um, on the 11th, and that is ages 7 to 12. Um, last year we had a junior teens, we do not have that this year. We'll be having um, a teen group from 7 to 12, so if you have um, youth from those ages or in those ages, um, Thursday nights here at 6.30. Is that in your bulletin? I think it is. Also... We have an Olympian club, which is, and a gopher club, which is a gophers are the little, 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 little people. And uh, some of you have little people in your life. I have little people in my life. And that would be like three to five years old, little people. Um, but then uh, Olympians is first through sixth grade. So we have one in Brownington. It's been going for a long time. Very good group of leaders. And... Uh, some of you already know that, but if that fits into um, your area of influence and stuff then where you can invite other kids to, then I would really encourage you to go there. Um, for the first time, though, we've kind of held off for a few years. We've been here for, I don't know, three or four years now, and we haven't had an Olympian club here because Irisburg Grace Brethren had one, but this year they're not having one, so um, we've decided to do our first one here. So Wednesday nights is when Olympian clubs will start. That'll be on the 17th. There'll be one starting here in Irisburg, and there'll also the same night be one starting in Brownington. So please be praying about um, your involvement. Maybe because you, you probably didn't know we were going to start one here because we didn't know it until last minute. And so if that fits into um, where your youth could come or some youth that you know that are in this area or in the Brownington area, either one, please be inviting and encouraging them to come. So why do we do youth groups? Because we want to see kids getting saved and we want to see them growing in, in their knowledge but in their also relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so if you have questions about that, you can ask me. Or um, Could we have any leaders that already know their leaders stand up for any of those clubs? Please, right now. Any of the clubs I just mentioned. All right, if you're a leader, so if you want to talk to somebody about the clubs... Okay, I, if you want to talk to anybody about the clubs and learn a little bit more about them, you can talk to any one of these people and they'll, they'll guide you and direct you on and hopefully answer your questions. All right, thank you. You may be seated. And you, Alyssa, too, can sit. All right, any uh, praises this morning? Yes, Mother. Do we have somebody? Oh, by the way, this is a very sad day. We will be losing Jake. It's our, it's, our <laughs> it's his last Sunday with us for a while because he's going to Word of Life Bible Institute. So, 
and seems I've already got him up here and we're making a spectacle. Why don't we pray for him right now? Anybody here in the group that I miss? Anybody going to BI this year that's here right now? Come on up, Sam. Anyone else? I know we have a few. Come on up, Chelsea. Is that, is that it in the house? All right, Dan, why don't you come up? You going to BI this year too, right? <laughs> they do take old people. Can I, can I stay home now? He's going. <laughs> <laughs> they take old people. He went for vacation. Yes, they do take. What do there were some seventy-year-olds <laughs> that graduated this year, so you'd be all right. Well, now I'm glad Jake's going to tell me old. <laughs> <laughs> all right, would you pray for him, Dan? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the privilege it is to be able to see these young people just want to strive to know you better and to develop a more intimate relationship with you, but then also to be guided by you where you're going to use them. Lord, I just pray that they would take this year to just saturate themselves in your word and uh, in your presence, Lord. I pray that you would do mighty works in them this year, preparing them for whatever you have for them beyond this. Lord, we thank you again just for every year when we see uh, teens get up and, and young adults get up and say, yes, we're going to go to the BI or we're going to go into even higher learning. Uh, not just educational-wise, but um, spiritually. And, Lord, that, that will make just great leaders for you. So, Lord, I pray that you prepare them ahead of time to be leaders in the fight uh, against this world and uh, just fighting for you. Lord, we thank you that they are willing. And, Lord, I just pray that you would comfort them and give them the endurance to go through and to come out not just better people, but more godly young men and women uh, ready to serve you on the battlefield. We, we lift them up to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sam. You let me in. She left. I can't even give her a hug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, praises. I think my mother's the first one. Did she still there? Yeah. Um, uh, I want to thank, first of all, I want to thank everybody that has been a part of um, bringing snacks for church after church. And I just, this was an, an announcement and a praise. So um, I have the new snack list out in the hallway, but plus I will be calling you every Tuesday, let you know. And for those who serve after, I, I want to praise the Lord for all of you too. And that is... Um, that schedule is on the refrigerator in the kitchen. You can check. So that's for the announcement part. So I just want to praise the Lord. I've had, um, most of you know, I've had all kinds of health things since, you know, all my life. And um, this last week, I had to have a uh, heart catheterization. And uh, it's not that big a deal, but twice, probably one of the hardest things I've have endured was when my artery burst in my leg and that was like many months of recuperation and lots of pain and stuff and they were going to have to go through my groin so there was a possibility that this could happen again so um at first i was all like ah no big deal but then people got to telling me about um different things and and uh, uh what it was going to involve and i realized that you know there was a possibility that i could be facing this artery burst again. So to be honest, I was, I was scared and, and uh, had kind of a rough time with it. But I praise the Lord. I really praise the Lord that it didn't, that didn't happen. Thank you for all of your praying. But also that, um, again, he showed me that no matter what we go through, there's a greater purpose. And that great, the very first person that um, Bob took me down, the very per first person, uh, doctor that we talked to, I had a chance to share our testimony to and um, with, and who's to know what God's going to do that with that. And that may be the whole purpose that, that they even took me in to check out my heart, who's to know. But so I praise the Lord that he again showed me that um, there's a, no matter what we're going through, uh, whether it's health or whether it's uh, relationships or whatever, we're all going through something. Let's face it. That's, that's a fact. But God has a greater purpose. And when God uses us to, to share with people, it's all worth it. So I praise him for that opportunity. Amen. I have
have a lot of praises, but um, I'm going to start from the very beginning. Um, Keith and I have had a lot of struggles put in our path in the last year, and um, we just praise God that his mom is doing better. Um, his dad is still struggling a little bit, but just keep them in prayer. But um, I also want to praise God for um, just keeping his obedience in me and showing me what it is that I need to do. Um, also, I want to praise God for this last week was crazy with Debbie's wedding and Keith also had to do a funeral um, and the people were very God haters um, and he really struggled on how he was going to put the gospel in there and he did tell them that he wasn't going to do it unless he could put the gospel in there and he gave Danny a call and uh, got some advice and he quoted John 3.16 and um, the people really looked at I think God in a different way so I think he really did please God through all that um, and thank you everyone for prayers on that um, and I also want to praise God that I'm finally a grandmother <laughs> it did not happen the way that I thought it should have happened it is not the way I wanted to become a grandmother but it's not about me um, it's all about God's plan and how he's going to use this child. And I know God is going to use this child just greatly to, to just glorify him. So it's a praise, but it's also a prayer to pray for the parents um, and to use this child to bring them to the Lord. Amen. I just want to praise God that my husband is getting baptized today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of funerals, I, Rachel mentioned, I went to a funeral yesterday, uh, Pastor Dan did the ceremony, and uh, we had an opportunity, I think this lady was 91 years old, and uh, had an opportunity about a month and a half ago, and her mind was great, uh, very encouraged, she came to know Jesus Christ, and uh, just to watch uh, a funeral like that, it, it's sad because you lose loved ones, but it's also glorious because it, you know, the Bible tells you what your future is with a, a person that comes to know Christ. It was just a great funeral, and I had a great time. Amen. I'm excited about a lot of things um, that are happening um, at the nursing home. Um, we're having people that are coming from the outside now on Thursday, which is really exciting. Um, I do ask that you continue. I put out a prayer request on my phone this week. Uh, <laughs> Norm's been going to see a lady who's very cognitive. Her name is Fanny. She needs um, prayer because she's not saved. She, she told the nurses she knows that Norm's preaching the truth and telling her the truth, but she hasn't received Christ yet. Um, the other thing I'm really excited about is I had an opportunity to share Christ with somebody this week, um, and some of the gentlemen here in our church know him, and that's Pepper Corey. And um, he was sitting next to us at Martha's, or we sat next to him, and he has a similar story in his life um, as Norm. So I, I went outside when he was leaving, and I gave him a track, and I asked that you pray for him because he was very receptive. Um, the other thing I'm really excited about is um, we got a phone call this week from some friends of ours from the Philippines who are in the United States right now. Um, we've known them for many years. They've built like 20 churches over in the Philippines. Um, they're very small churches, and they'll be here at Brownington tonight to present their um, mission field and to preach the gospel. So I just want to tell you guys, if you want to really meet some really dynamic um, national people from the Philippines, it would be a real opportunity for you to come tonight and hear their message um, and what they're doing that's really exciting there in the Philippines. Uh, Janet inspired me to say something. I was around Janet this week, and I've known Janet for a long time, and I've never seen you scared before. <laughs> and it scared me. I was like, oh my gosh, it must be serious, Janet's anxious. Nice to see you stumble once in a while, sister. <laughs> so glad you're still with us. I prayed a lot for you that day. But I want to share this, because I just, I'm just finishing a book by C.S. Lewis called The Problem of Pain. If any of you have not heard of it, read it. It's awesome, and it gets right down to the core of the gospel. 
I hear a lot of non-believers, some of you may be here, say, why would God allow suffering and pain? And C.S. Lewis puts it this way. He says, the amazing thing isn't that God lets good people suffer. It's he lets so many good people get away without suffering. Think about that. Yeah. From suffering comes compassion, comes pity, and comes fear. Even Janet, which she overcame. Is that right? You know I'm. And I look around this room, and I look at people who are suffering health issues that I can't even imagine, and then I look at my own. And so I give that theologically for people to tell us, what do you want? You want to live on the beach all your life? Why would you need God? As C.S. Lewis says in the book, you know, I find myself doing something terrible, and I'm like, God, please help me. And then I come to him, and then as soon as I'm done with him, I go right back to the way I went. Oswald Chambers said the same thing. So we need pain. Uh, C.S. Lewis says it's planting God's flag in enemy rebel territory. That's what pain is. So my praise. I've been in horrible pain for years. And, um, I have been sleep deprived for about the last nine months. And this week, I finally got three nights of sleep in a row. And I want to thank George for finally praying for me. I've been asking for him. I knew he wasn't praying for me because I just couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. So thank you, finally, because we know that his prayers are more powerful you know, than ours. <laughs> So on that levity, I mean, we should embrace suffering. I went to Yale Divinity School this winter, and I met some people there, and I told them that I suffered from Lyme disease. And they were filled with compassion, which comes with suffering. They said, oh, what a horrible disease. I said, oh, really? It's a gift. Romans 8, 28. I thank God for my pain today, too, because I don't know that I would pay attention to him so much if I didn't have it. And I know that sounds crazy, and I don't want any more. But I look at others, and it humbles me that I would worry about what I'm going through compared to what they are. And that's why we have pain. And that's why we have Janet still with us. God bless you, sister. Thank you. <laughs> I want to praise God this morning for one thing is my, my daughter and my grandchildren have come here from Arizona safely. So it's been, it's a praise for that and another thing I'd like to praise God for what he's doing in my life my personal life in the last three years he's mm -hmm. brought me through lots of trials and and things which is to equip and grow us um, in a on a personal level with our Lord and Savior and and t today I'm going through some more trials and and you know I trust, I trust God totally with him because I know in my heart that when God puts us to, brings us to it, he's going to see us through it. So with my insecurities and, and things that we go through on a personal level and a human level, um, God is much, much bigger and he will see us through it as long as we keep our eyes on him. And I, I feel so blessed. And I have a joy, even through all of this, that just passes understanding um, that only comes from him. So through what I'm going through, I'm, I am totally trusting God with it. As long as I'm walking through it, he's going to see me through it. So I praise him for that. Amen. All right. Thank you for your praises. What a wonderful way to start our service. Let's uh, ask God and go to God with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for all those that are gathered here in your name. I pray, Lord, that you will guide our service, that everything will be done in spirit and in truth. And, Lord, I just uh, thank you for the realization that um, anything good does come from you, Lord, and is a gift, and we should be thankful for it. And, Lord, that's totally opposite of uh, the culture around us who um, has an expectation of everything good. But, Lord, we thank you that you do give good gifts to your children. And that uh, if we realize it, it can really encourage us and, and give us hope that um, you are the one who holds the future. And Lord, we just pray for this service, pray for our time, pray for everyone here who has brought whatever concerns, cares, worries, joys, triumphs, and, and um, the like. May they be able to bring them here to you, Lord. And may you, through this service, just speak to their hearts in an encouraging and powerful way. In Jesus' name, amen. stand with us and join us in worship.
heard you. All right.
no. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, we're going to do prayer requests this morning. If anybody has uh, somebody there in life that, in their life that uh, is struggling and needs prayer, or if you need prayer this morning, then just uh, raise your hand and we'll pray for you. Not all at once. Ginger. Well, it's kind of a combination praise and prayer, but more prayer. Um, yesterday, we got a phone call from Autumn, um, the place that she was living with the children. She's not allowed to stay there anymore. Apparently, the landlord didn't approve of her moving in, and so it was a choice of her moving out on her own or being thrown out. So it put her in a bind. We can't do, I don't have the room, and emotionally, I can't take the extra stress. But Steve's taking the children for a couple weeks, and Autumn's going to be probably staying with her mother in Stowe. So just put prayer into for Autumn. But it's also a praise because I think Steve was starting to go back to his old ways. So I believe that him having the children for the next couple weeks is going to keep him back on track and a reminder of why he needs to be sober and stay on the track that he's been doing. So I believe that was, you know, the Lord's plan for this. And because after yesterday when we stopped to see Steve, I'm pretty sure that was the reason. So, but yeah, just keep them in prayer, please. Before I get to my prayer request, I want to, um, I missed praises. I was in the back with my cranky babies, but um, we had our family camp yesterday and last night, and um, it was a real blessing. We had a really good time. It was a small group, but um, we were able to really spend all our time together. We did the corn maze together, and it was just a nice time, and I want to praise God for giving us that chance to spend the time together. Um, my prayer request is um, for my grandfather and his wife. He has been diagnosed with cancer, um, lymphoma, and they believe it's in his bone marrow. He goes on Wednesday to have a PET scan done to find out where everything is, but um, he's 85. He also, his kidneys are failing, um, and they won't do anything because of his age for that. Um, so he, he's not going to do any treatments to prolong his life. Um, but prayers that he won't suffer too bad, and prayers for his wife. Um, he is a Christian. He is saved. So praise God, God for that. Yeah. What's his name? Um, Donald Fletcher. Hi. I have a praise and a request. Um, I'd like to... Keep I'd like to thank God, first of all, for bringing us here. The last two years have been very, very trying for my husband and I. We thought the first 18 were bad enough, but the last have been. <laughs> I couldn't even imagine the day that we lost our son. How much it would change our lives then. Just continue to pray for us. Um, the 18th will mark his two-year anniversary. And it seems like after your son dies, everybody else just forgets that he seems to exist, but he never does in your heart. Um, I can't tell you. Yeah, I can. At least twice in the last two years, Bruce and I have sat in... Uh, almost committed suicide ourselves because we couldn't bear to go on any further. And we just kept clinging to something, some thread of hope that God had a purpose still for us. And then he brought Stormy and Blaze into our lives. We don't know where God's going to take us with them, so continue to pray, because we still don't know at this moment. Their mother was supposed to come and pick them up this weekend, and we haven't even heard from her. I don't know if that's a blessing or what, but uh, they're still here, and I need to figure out something, because as of Tuesday, they'll be truant. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you could just remember to keep us in prayer, especially this next month as we struggle and... Uh, 
try to make sense of all this and where God's trying to guide us into this, you know, at this point in our lives. I'm sorry, I haven't had the blessing of meeting you guys yet. What, what's your names? Linda and Bruce. Okay. Thank you for sharing. I know that can be difficult. Yeah, pray for uh, Joe and Sue Buser. They were the couple I was here about a month ago. He's been blind for 37 years, but they still haven't figured out. His daughter, Tammy Sue, has had some issues with bleeding, and they've got five specialists in. But keep them in prayer that the, the Lord will give the ability of the doctors to be able to figure it out so that she can uh, come along with their life and, and you know, get that part straightened out. Also, praise that it's uh, Pastor Dan and Liz's 12th anniversary. Praise God. Should we sing? Um, Any other? Oh, yeah. Hang on a uh, second, Scott. Is I'd it? like to ask for uh, prayers. Um, it's for my children uh, and uh, Renee's children for obedience. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and also uh, prayers uh, uh, for Jesus to bring us closer to him. And also, I'd like to ask for prayers um, for uh, the mother of my children and I to uh, work together better for our children. And uh, I, guess, uh, I guess that would really help us all out a lot right now. Any other prayers? All right, let's go. Have one now. <laughs> I was hoping my son Joe would be here today. So, um, many of you know him, Joe Clark. I'd ask you to pray for his his growth, finding Christ. I think he's uh, struggling. So, thank you. Okay, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, um, we have a, a lot of prayer requests brought in front of us today. And I know there's so many more that are in each, each and everyone's heart right now as they're sitting there. and Some wishing they'd have said their prayer request but didn't want to do it in front of everybody. And you know all of our prayers, Lord, and um, I pray as we are here together as a group that we may just pray for each other and care for each other. And, and think about each other as we go through the week. Um, I know it's easy for me to sit out there and um, hear a prayer request and think, I need to pray for that person. And uh, the next Sunday rolls around and I haven't prayed for him once. Uh, Lord, I, I just pray that we take it more serious because it means so much to you that we are praying. And it means a lot to the people that we're praying for, Lord. Um, I try and pick out a few people that I just um, really desire to pray for and, uh, and try and remember them through the week. And I've been able to do that lately. And, and uh, as I'm going to work or something, just remember to pray for them, Lord. I pray that we can all just do that. Lord, uh, I'm just going to say the names of a few people so that we can keep it in our minds uh, as we go through the week. Autumn and Steve, Donald, Linda and Bruce, Stormy and Blaze, Scott and Renee, and Joe. You heard their requests, Lord, and uh, I just pray that you work in their lives and use some of the people that are asking for these prayers and, and the people who have heard the request today um, to do your work as well, Lord. I thank you for all that you do in our lives. and. I thank you that you're there, Lord, because uh, you know just some of the prayers we heard today, Lord. Without you, there's no hope. There's no hope, Lord, none at all. Thank you for everything you do for us, and I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
before we sing this next song, let's uh, say happy anniversary to Pastor Dan and Mrs. Pastor Dan. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. You all stand and join us. Uh, pray for the offering real quick. Lord, Father, thank you for today. Thank you for uh, what you've blessed us with, with the, with the body here and, uh, and uh, the people you've surrounded us with, Father. I pray you would help us to use the offerings that are given today to uh, further your kingdom on this earth and in this town and county, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
she's one day and the shame she can't hide how did i get here i'm not who i once was and i'm crippled by the fear i'm falling too far to love but don't you know who you are what has been done for you You are more than the choices that you've made. You are more than the sum of your past mistakes. You are more than the problems you create. You've been remade. Well, she tries to believe it. That she's been given new life. But she can't shake the feeling that it's not true tonight. She knows all the answers And she's rehearsed all the lies And so she'll try to do better But then she's too weak to try But don't you know who you are? You are more than the choices that you make You are more than the sum of your past mistakes You are more Going along with the prayer requests and the praises this morning made me think of, we are more than conquerors to him who loved Christ. And sometimes it may feel like we're underneath it, but through Christ being born again, we are more than conquerors because of Christ who is the conqueror. This morning, uh, the message title is, and you probably know it better than me because you get it written in front of you. Well, what does it say? Follower. Seeker or not. So you are one of those, okay? You're either a follower, you're a seeker, or you're a not. You can go with that however you want to. In your mind, I had a couple thoughts that would have gone along with the not, you know, like this, you know, that goes with it. But anyways, you're one of those three groups this morning. A follower, a seeker, or not. We're going to be looking at uh, Acts chapter 8 this morning. You may know we're going to have a baptism at the end of it. A couple uh, youth are getting baptized this morning. Um, and I know one person liked me saying a couple youth. Right, Ian? You like being in that category? Yep. Um, but along with that is a, a baptism we're going to look at in Scripture in Acts chapter 8. In fact, somebody even mentioned it this morning in passing, did not knowing that I was preaching on it. But it's about the Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. So we'll be looking at chapter 8, verse 26. So let's just read down through it to begin with this morning, and then um, see what God has to show us. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went, and there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, 
who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot. And he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the Spirit of the Lord, or the Spirit, said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you're reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Kind of interesting. What book have we been in? And what is the passage he's reading? Isn't that kind of neat? It's just kind of neat correlation there. Like a sheep that was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shears is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. That was the Isaiah passage. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth. And beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. And the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. Let's ask the Lord to guide us as we look at his word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you that it's real and alive and, and is not just for, for or about Philip and the eunuch, but is for us, Lord. Just guide us this morning as we look at it. Speak through me in Jesus' name. Amen. What does a follower look like? We're going to find five points right in the, in the text of what a follower looks like and five points in the text of what a seeker looks like. And then a not would be anything else. Okay? That's where we're... What's that? Well, hey, if you feel like it fits you, that's not my fault. Okay? So don't put your blame on me. <laughs> All right. He should be quiet because I'm supposed to be one speaking. I'll get my turn. All right. Anyways. Or not. Or not. Yes. A follower of God. Let's look down through the text. What does a follower of God look like? Number one, when you think of a follower of God, let me ask this question. And John excluded from answering. Um, what does a follower look like just in general? What is a follower? Just follower, don't spiritualize it. Just what does a follower look like? Somebody said something somewhere. Yes. Okay. Follower goes along with what everybody else does. Anybody got any other thoughts? They don't think for themselves. Okay, that's possible. What's that? Someone who is led by a leader. So let's take that thought. It could be somebody who doesn't think for themselves, or it could be somebody who respects somebody and wants to follow somebody, right? So it's not necessarily don't think, but they think this person is in line with their thinking, right? Okay. Did you have your hand up too? No, but that's exactly what I was thinking. Of course. <laughs> I'm glad you're such a leader, okay, and not a follower of those around you. Thank you for the example. All right, so a follower. Now, when we come into this uh, spiritual realm, into, into Christ, and we talk about a follower of Christ, what might be another word we would use instead of follower? Disciple. disciple. Now, what is a disciple? <laughs> You're so wise. <laughs> Don't you know, and you're not, never supposed to use the same word in the definition. Okay, what is a disciple? A student? Anybody have any other thoughts? A disciple is a student, not a teacher. Because a disciple follows the teacher. Okay? Anyone have any other thoughts? What's that? A servant? Yeah, a disciple would serve. Um, in fact, if we think of in the new, oh, first century time, when, a, when a, the disciple of Jesus or a disciple of a rabbi, where Jesus was one, they would actually not only... Uh, student as in come to a class and listen to them, but they would actually follow them, get the thing, morning, noon, and night. They would eat with them. They would sleep around them. They would hang out with them. They would spend time with them. They would be with them all the time. That is what a disciple would do in the New Testament scripture. Okay, so keep that in your, in your mind when you think of this. So when we think of a disciple, when we think of a follower of God, we're going to take some, some points out of this passage specifically. Number one, 
looking right up at the first part. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. A follower of Christ obeys. And I'm going to say obeys the Holy Spirit. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ this morning, you have the Holy Spirit inside you. A true follower of Christ will obey the Spirit's leading. Anybody here ever known that you were led by the Holy Spirit in something? Sometimes it's confusing and we're not sure though, right? That's a reality. Sometimes we, am I really being led by God or is this my own spirit? We have that. But sometimes it's crystal clear, is it not? Anybody here, and you don't have to raise your hand, who has been known that God was leading you, but you didn't follow? <laughs> okay, you can raise your hand. We've all been there too, haven't we? Now, there's something in Scripture that calls, and this is kind of an aside, not from this text here, that's called quenching the Spirit. I think Scripture is very clear that the more that you obey the leading of the Holy Spirit, the more the Holy Spirit will lead you. The more, then, because sometimes I, I know in my own life that, that uh, I may ask for the leading of the Holy Spirit and truly think I want it, but then he may guide me to talk to somebody I didn't really want to talk to, and I don't do it. I remember this when I was in college at the BI, and, and I was, I think, triggered because I was asking for God through his Spirit to lead me in opportunities to share Christ with people. And I don't know about you, but have you ever been prompted, like I was, coming out of Walmart, and there was this guy sitting on a bench, and think, he doesn't want to hear. He's not there to listen to me. He doesn't want to. Anybody ever talked yourself out of it, the leading of the Spirit? Okay, I did it that day. But you know what I've noticed, though, is that when I start talking myself out of it, guess what happens? The Holy Spirit stops leading and talking to me. And I have to almost pray again, God, please, <laughs> I do want to obey. I messed up. I didn't obey this time. So, in other words, a follower of Christ, number one, obeys the Spirit. When the Spirit leads you, and it may be to talk to somebody, maybe to do something, maybe to make a phone call, it may be um, even a calling in life. And it may be something a lot smaller than that. But the more you obey, the more that he will speak to you. All right, number one, obeys the Holy Spirit. Well, let's keep going. What else uh, does a follower of Christ look like? Keep going here. And he rose and went. Obedience was quick, by the way. He didn't sit around trying to excuse it. He got up and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning. Seated in his chair, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to, the Philip, to Philip, go over to, and join his chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the, um, the Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you're reading? A follower of Christ is looking for opportunities and takes them. A follower of Christ um, looks for opportunities to share. Looks for opportunities to share. Sometimes we're so, thank God, if you put it right here, I will share about you to somebody else. But you know what? God does that sometimes, but sometimes he wants us to open our mouth first. You ever been there? Where God wants you to say something, and when you say something, maybe not anything too drastic, maybe you just share what God's doing in your own life, it sparks an interest in them, and they want to know more. And a follower of Christ seeks opportunities to share and to go forward. What else? So Philip ran to him and heard him reading, and he said, Do you understand what you were reading? <laughs> a follower of Christ asks questions. One of the greatest ways to share your faith is to ask questions. Do you realize if you go through a neat maybe... Um, uh, study for you, would be to go through all the questions that Jesus asked. Jesus was a great communicator. We, well, we would say he was the greatest communicator that ever lived, right? He was God. And he used questions. A lot of times, if you look at him, he doesn't just give answers. When people ask him questions, he doesn't just give an answer. What happens when somebody just gives you an answer? You may or may not remember it, but you probably don't remember it very long. And it probably didn't make an influence in your life. But if somebody asks you a question and you have to actually think about the answer, you've got some part in it and it lasts longer and you get it, right? Like right now, I am just telling you stuff and a lot of you are going to walk out that door and you will have no idea what I talked about this morning. I probably won't have any idea what I talked about this morning either, so I'm with you. And if I was listening to somebody else, I surely wouldn't remember what. So a lot of times, that's why we do a little bit of interaction, because we're hoping that it connects a little more. 
And that's what Jesus did. He asked questions so that people were engaged and involved in, in wanting to know more about him and actually thinking about it. Philip asked questions to the eunuch to get him intrigued. Do you understand what you're reading? And then, and then the other guy asked a question too, and he said, how can I unless somebody guides me? And he invited Philip to sit with him. Now the passage of scripture you're reading was this, and it's um, the prophet uh, passage from Isaiah. What else? He reads that scripture in Isaiah, okay? And then verse 34 he says, And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I asked, does the prophet say this? About himself or someone else? The, uh, then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. A follower of Christ will meet people where they're at. Is that, do you get that one? I think that's one of the key ones. Maybe a couple of the other ones aren't that important, but this one is very important. We'll meet people where they're at. He, were, he came up to this eunuch, and he took the scripture where he was already at. He took the place that he was at. He got up and sat with him. You just picture him jumping up in this chariot, huh? Of course, he must have had a little bit of supernatural power here to be able to run up to the chariot anyway. I don't know. I mean, here could outrun a chariot. I couldn't. I, I'm sweating just thinking about it. Or is it hot in here? Someone want to turn the fans on higher? It's hot muggy in here. But anyways... He runs up the chariot and he is asked to get on and he gets on and he starts with this scripture, the exact one he was already reading, and then goes from there and it says what? Starting with this scripture, he did what? What's it say? He did open his mouth, but starting with this scripture, he did what? He told him about Christ. We have opportunities quite often where we could start right where somebody's at and, lead, and bring them to the point of telling them about Jesus Christ. But what keeps us from going there a lot of times? What keeps us from taking a person from where they're at, meeting them where they're at, and getting them to Jesus? Fear. What would keep us from it? Fear. They don't really want to know what I have to say, and they don't really care about God. Rejection. Oh no, what will they think about me after? And they won't look at me, and they'll walk on the other side of the street, or whatever. Selfishness. And ice cream is a lot more important than telling this person about Christ. You're right. No, for sure. Lack of knowledge. What do you mean? Some people just haven't studied enough that they could they could just imagine take someone to scripture and show them what the Bible says. Okay, a lack of knowledge. I'm gonna say another twist to that is you thinking you don't have enough knowledge and they're going to ask you a question you don't know and you won't be able to answer. But guess what? What was our first point? A follower of Christ obeys, obeys who? Christ. The Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit's inside you, do you have enough for what that person needs at that moment? Why can I say that? Because if God gave you the opportunity, guess what? He gives you exactly what you need. Because sometimes we think we need to have all these eloquent words to tell somebody to bring them to Christ. You know, I've, I've sat, stood here and I've preached the gospel before and I'm like, why would anybody believe this? <laughs> that this guy was God and man at the same time? That he died on a cross and he took my sins on himself? That he was buried and then three days again rose again? How could I ever say that in a way that would make anybody believe that? seems kind of ridiculous, does it not? But that's because I can't, no matter how eloquent my words are, even if I'm a C.S. Lewis, <laughs> it doesn't, that isn't what's going to get somebody to the point of salvation. I need to just know the simplicity of the gospel, what I just shared, that Jesus loves me, that he is God and man. When he came to earth, he did die on that cross for my sin. And he did conquer death, and he's in heaven. He ascended into heaven. He's preparing a place for those who love him. That's all I need to know. Because who is the one who's ever going to make it make sense to any of us? The Holy Spirit, God himself. And if you're here this morning, maybe it's never made sense to you. Maybe you've never heard the gospel. Hopefully you're hearing it this morning, and God's through his Holy Spirit, is, is showing you and giving you understanding. But it's not going to be through the eloquent words of any speaker. It's going to be through Christ himself. What was our point that I was just talking about? Meeting people where they're at. 
That's what Philip did. He met him where he was at, and he pointed him to Christ. Then the fifth one. Um, then Philip opened his mouth and began with the scripture. He told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and, being ba- and he baptized him. The last one is so simple. If you're led by the Spirit, you're meeting people where they're at, what do you have to do next to make it happen? You have to act. Because can I be led by the Spirit, get there, keep my mouth shut, be there right where they're at, and, but not say anything? I've been there. So the last point, simple, is true is to just act on it. All right, that's a follower of Christ, but what does a seeker look like? A seeker. How did that fit at all? Oh, okay. I was thinking of jungle. Thank you for waking people up, though. I know I was getting kind of boring. All right, seeker. Number, the second one is a seeker. A seeker is one like this Ethiopian who searches for truth. Maybe you're here this morning, you're searching for truth. Is there a lot of ideas about God in this world? Yes? Can we say the Ethiopian eunuch was searching for truth? He says he was a worshiper of God, but he didn't really know who God was. He, he did even go to the Jerusalem, though, but he didn't really know who Jesus was. But he was searching. He was wanting to know. He knew there was a God somewhere. You know, I believe everyone realizes there's a God, even if they say there is none. Anybody see um, God's not dead? So true. You know, the, the kid gets the, his professor to a point where he gets so angry with God. But what was the problem? He had said there was no God. So how can you be angry at someone who doesn't exist? I love that part about that because it's so true. Why would I be angry at something that doesn't exist, right? The seeker is searching for truth. Knows there's a God. I believe God has given each one of us a God-shaped hole that only He can fill. We try to fill it with other things that don't satisfy, that don't fulfill us. Oh, they will for a time though, won't they? There are things in this world that fulfill us for a moment, don't they? That are not pleasing to God? Yes, they do. That's one thing we need to be honest about. Because it's easy to say in Christianity, you know, don't, you know, son, daughter, don't do any of those things because they will make you miserable. Well, don't tell them that because then they try it and they say, oh, this is actually kind of fun. And then all of a sudden they realize maybe mom and dad were lying. Be truthful with your children. Tell them, yes, it can be fun, but these are the consequences that can happen from going down this road. Be truthful. Be honest. Don't withhold, because you might set them up to fail. All right, so number one, seeks for truth. Number two, is open to truth. I mean, he was reading the Scripture, and he was willing and eager to have Philip talk to him about it, wasn't he? So he wasn't just searching for truth, but he was actually open to the truth. And then number three, he asked questions. What does this mean? What is this, who is this talking about? He was asking questions. And then I put fourthly, accepts truth. And he acted on it. How did he act on it? He believed in what Philip said about the good news of Jesus Christ. And immediately, you notice it's not Philip trying to talk him into getting baptized? Maybe you're here this morning you don't know what baptism is about. Well, baptism, it's, it's kind of a picture, or it is a picture. When we accept Christ as our Savior, what the belief is, what we need to believe to be saved is that Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again. That's what we need to believe. Well, baptism is symbolic of that, is a picture of that. When we die, we're buried down into the water, and then we rise up again. 
It's also symbolic of we were dead to our sins before Christ, or dead in our sins, but now we are new creatures. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things come new. So there's the idea that we go down in the water, we're dirty. I remember one guy I baptized years ago. Some of you probably remember him, Dennis Henson. And I remember him saying to me, he says, I better be baptized last because the water's going to be black. <laughs> Nobody else will want to go in it. He knew it wouldn't be. But he just realized he was such a sinner that it would be. But the idea is it's not truly what's happening because Christ shed blood is what cleanses your sin. But baptism is symbolic. It's a picture of what Christ has already done. The cleansing of him in a, in a life. Philip immediately said, he accepted the truth and he said, I want to be baptized. In other words, what hinders me? There's water right there. Let's do it right now. And he went and got baptized. Where are you at this morning? You know Jesus Christ is your Savior. But are you truly a follower of Christ? Are you truly striving to live by the power of the Holy Spirit? Live by the leading of the Holy Spirit? Or are you trying to do it on your own? Because even after we're saved, we have a choice. We can go our own way, even as Christians, can't we? Or we can follow Christ. Or are you a seeker? You're here this morning, maybe you're saying, I've been trying to know what truth is. I know there's something missing in my life, but I'm just not sure what it is or who it is. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's Christ that you're missing. And he wants you to hear this, to hear how he loved you enough in the John 3.16, many of us know it. Used to be shown in what football game was it? Used to be on the plaque. And anybody know? Anybody used to see it on TV? Anybody not know what I'm talking about? You guys look very blank. You don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, anyways, forget that one then. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. If you're a seeker this morning, that's what God wants you to hear. That he sent his son, Jesus, to die for your sin. To break the bondage of sin in your life. So that you could be free from sin today. From the enslavement of it. And have eternal life. Life in heaven forever. If you're a seeker this morning, Romans 10.9 says this. If you confess your mouth, O Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You can be saved this morning. It's a, it's a decision between you and God. And if you're in the not category, you're not a follower and you're not a seeker, too bad for you. I'm really sorry for you because that's the worst place to be in. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you um, for even the example of Philip and the eunuch, how you truly um, want to work in, in those of us who know you as Savior in our lives and how you want to work in those who are seeking and want to show them yourself. Lord, I pray if there's somebody here who does not know you as their Savior, that you would draw them by your Spirit and that they would say yes and make a decision even this morning for you. Lord, I thank you that you do care. And if there's somebody here who does not, who's not in either one of these categories, I pray, Lord, that something will trigger their minds today and their hearts to get them to start seeking so that they can know you, the one true God who loves them as their Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.